answer is no. A second agent for miscellaneous affairs? Damn it, Melville, there isn't enough workload for one. And what there is is performed in a bizarre fashion, suggesting improper supervision. It was just a suggestion, sir. Maybe I should suggest what you do with it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get ready for Senator Irving's party. Oh, yes, to celebrate his appointment to the Government Overview Committee. <laughs> They're not going to be overviewing us, are they, sir? That's what I'm going to find out. Now, if you'll excuse me. Yes, sir. Have a good time. <laughs> Say hi to the Senator. Melville. Uh, yes, sir. I'm just gathering up my things, just on my way out now. Will there be anything else? Yes, why don't you see if you can arrange the elevator service so that I don't have to wait forever whenever I manage to leave the office? I'll get right on that, sir. ISI Security, Kate speaking. Hi, Kate. It's Sally Aitken from Purchasing. Oh, hi. How are you doing? Fine, listen. I've got a question. Which department handles crimes occurring long ago involving important people? I don't know. Hang on. Crimes involving important people? What kind of crimes? Arson? Bribery? Counterfeiting? No. Nothing like that. Matters not covered by other departments should be directed to miscellaneous affairs. Miscellaneous affairs. Thanks, Kate. my friends. First, the good news. Senator Irving's appointment as chairman of the Overview Committee is effective at midnight. That is right now. All right, yeah. Now, the bad news. The senator is still out of town in Northridge and will not be with us. But we will speak to him on the speakerphone and be the first to congratulate him. All right. It's time, boys and girls. Northridge Hotel. Senator Irving, please. That you, Ken? I'm here with a few of your friends, Senator. We wanted to be the first to say... Congratulations, Congratulations Mr. Chairman! Thank you, Ken. Thank you all. I assume you have a few thousand words for your friends on the happy yeah. occasion. Just that all their departments had better be clean as hound's teeth. Oh, hey. I intend to expose waste, corruption, and neglect of duty wherever I find it. I warned you. Now it's done. You left 
me no choice. It's out of my hands now. I want to say a special word of thanks to the people on my staff who have always been there to give me a hand. Senator, it's 10 after 12. If you're determined to rid the nation of injustices, you'd better get some rest. Now I have a question, Ken. What is it, sir? Who's paying for the party? <laughs> <laughs> you are, Senator, and not out of government funds. Glad to hear that, Ken. Good night, all. Good, Good night, night, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Miscellaneous affairs. Sorry for the inconvenience. This is an elevator weight check. Please give your name and department as you hit the scales. Barrett, filing. Go easy on the starches, Barrett. What the hell is going on here, VH? Glad you asked that, Ernie. We're trying to reduce the elevator waiting time during the morning rush. And how, in the blue blazes, by knowing our weight, can you do that? I'm sorry you asked that, Ernie. So stupid. It must be Greenspan's idea. You said it. I didn't. Ernie, get in line. <sighs> ah, it's better. I'll call Mr. Greenspan. Uh, uh, that, that is for Adderley. I can see that, but what is it? I don't know. This one is from the cafeteria. It's one of these lift-off boxes. For your greater convenience, the cafeteria will now be open between 12 and 2. Cafeteria is always open between 11 and 3. How is that more convenient? I don't know. I guess it's more convenient for them, huh? Now, just get your hands off that box. Come on, Mr. Greenspan, come on. It says VH Adderley. Personal. 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 No, I can see that. My Barfield bust. You what? Jesse Barfield. Uh, right fielder, Blue Jays, American League batting champion. I sent all the way to Mexico for this. The guy that did it used to do rock musicians, and he branched out and started doing American presidents. And now... Yuck, yuck, yuck. Ball players. Oh my gosh, he looks like Ronald Reagan. I know, but have you noticed how much Jesse Barfield and Ronald Reagan look alike? Yeah, I get them mixed up all the time. What a monstrosity! It's brilliant. Oh no, yeah, I think it. Well, it makes a provocative statement. The only thing that's provocative is you coming in here talking about a football player. Now, what about your assignments? All done, Melville. I've got the weight of everybody on the early morning elevator rush. What about the absentees? What? I need the weights of every person who is in the building. Melville, would you mind telling me what I'm doing? Isn't it obvious? Once I know the weight of every employee in this building, I can assign them a particular elevator and a stated departure time. Yeah, but Mr. Greenspan, doesn't that mean that people are going to have to wait? Wait a minute, Mona. I want to hear this. I think we're in the presence of greatness. Thank you. In that way, every elevator will carry its maximum load and depart on schedule. Uh, what if there's a visitor? Uh, good thought, Adderley. I'll uh, factor that into my equation once you get me the weights of the absentees. You know, you could solve Clack's problem by just putting a sign over one of the elevators that says department heads only. Adderley, Major Clack is the only department head who used... Uh, my idea will work better. Now, Mona has the list of the employees. Now, you determine who did not come in today, go out, and get their weight. That is an order. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Greenstein, with all due respect, why... Mona, yours is not to reason why. Yours is but to do or die. You mean we do have a choice? <laughs> yes, yeah, schedule a press conference for the morning, bright and early. Did you read about Sally Atkin? Terrible thing. She once worked for the senator. Should we send flowers? And a card with her deepest sympathies, Keith and Ken. Charge them to the senator's personal account. Some of that, folks. Some of that. There's work to be done. Welcome back, Senator. Thank you, Maria. Nice to be back. How was the trip? Uneventful. Everything taken care of? Not quite. It looks as though she cleaned out her office. We still don't have the tape. Then I'd suggest you take a look around while you're cleaning her apartment. Miss Aiken. Hello. Are you the police? I'm Adderley, ISI, miscellaneous affairs. Sorry to come in, but the door was open. It's okay. Can I help you with something? I'm looking for Sally Aiken. Why? It's a little hard to explain, but uh, I need her weight. She committed suicide last night. Jumped off the Cambridge overpass. <sighs> I'm sorry. Was she a relative? I worked with her. I'm waiting for the police. I need to get an address book so I can call her friends and relatives. Sorry to disturb you. It's quite all right. There's a branch of our government which has never been subjected to public scrutiny. Now, this committee, this committee is going to shed some light where it needs to be shed. Any questions? Have you decided which agency to start with? I certainly have. A particular department within ISI is either a do-nothing operation or a mask for covert and illegal activities. And what department is that? Miscellaneous Affairs. Yes, Major Clark. Yes, right away, sir. They Look. Oh, my dart board. I know, they took everything. I can't even cry. They even took my, you know. Your facial tissues. My facial tissues. But who? And why? They are the Senate Governmental Overview Committee. The files and effects of this department have been removed pursuant to the attached subpoena. Can they do this? Well, the evidence suggests that they can. And I want to know why. How would I know? And when something happens that I don't understand, it's usually your fault. Not this time, Melville. It gets worse, Satterley. This is for me personally. I'm to appear before the committee at noon today. Mr. Greenspan, I'm sorry. Um, Major Clark just called and he wants you to talk to him before you testify. I'm sorry. Well, I certainly want to talk to him. Oh, VH, what do you think's going on? I don't know, Moan. But I'm sure the committee will tell us what they're after. Meantime, I'm supposed to get Sally Aiken's weight. BH, 
If she's dead, I don't think you need her weight. I mean, she's hardly going to be riding the elevators. No, I'm interested in how she died. How she died? Yeah. When I went to her apartment, there was a guy there. He said he was a friend and he was cleaning up. So? I want to know why. And the room stunk of ammonia. And there was a large wet spot on the carpet. And ammonia is used to clean up spots, so... What kind of spot? I have no idea why Senator Irving would subpoena your files or your furniture, for that matter. I'm sure he has a good reason, sir. After all, the senator is a respected... Manipulative headline hunter. My sentiments exactly, sir. I won't tell him a thing. You will cooperate fully with his committee, answer all his questions. Is that wise, sir? I, I don't want to divulge any secrets. Melville, you don't know any secrets. Just answer the man's questions and try not to embarrass this organization in the process. Good luck. Heart attack. Just add his name and address from his driver's license. I'm late for lunch. Nothing much for you here today, VH. A heart attack, pure and simple. You know, if God had intended us to ride a bicycle, we'd have been born with wheels. <laughs> Maybe. I wanted to ask you about Sally Aiken. Oh, yeah. It's all in my report. Uh, suicide. She died from a skull fracture. The occipital lobe. Occipital lobe? Yeah, it's in the back of the head. Come here, I'll show you. No, no, no. Back here. Yeah, right. Your report mentioned a gash on the forehead. She had quite a bad fall, and uh, there wasn't too much of her that wasn't banged up. Your report also mentioned the time of death was 12.07 a.m. Are you usually that precise? <laughs> Sometimes we get lucky, VH. I mean, uh, there was a squad car near the scene just after it happened. The report was logged at 12.09. I allowed two minutes for the cop to make sure that she was dead. What was she wearing? Well, it's in the report. She was wearing a shirt, blouse, skirt, and a pair of sandals. No sweater, or raincoat. It was cold and rainy that night. <laughs> she was on her way to a suicide, VH. I mean, uh, would you worry about catching a cold? <laughs> Good one, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Got something. Sally Aiken Paul. It is marked P.I. Political Influence Handle with Care. Which means some government biggie got her the job. Right. Now, do you remember the Pemberton mine disaster? Uh, a bunch of miners were killed. 170 to be exact. Oh, yes, I remember. Okay. Uh, faulty construction or something. Uh, building inspector took a bribe. Um, from, yeah, uh, from a candidate for the House. Now, he was opposed by a young politician named Keith Irving, who proved it. Oh, was Sally Aiken working for him then? Yeah, she had a nervous breakdown shortly after that, and then he was elected soon after that. See. I'm telling you, it, it's definitely, there's definite evidence that they were connected, because Anna says that they've been calling. His office has been calling, asking about flowers for the funeral. Come on, Mona. I want to see the great investigator handle the great obfuscator. Let the record show that the witness, Melville Morton Greenspan, appears pursuant to subpoena and that the oath has been administered. Mr. Greenspan, what is the function of the Department of Miscellaneous Affairs? We initiate dialogue between apartments, uh, uh, departments not fully executing the proper order of things. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means that uh, process is not fully established uh, or detailed, uh, according to the parameters of this organization, are channeled to miscellaneous affairs for proper clarification. <laughs> Mr. Greenspan, I asked you a direct question. I expect a direct answer. Yes, sir. According to the ISI manual, the function of miscellaneous affairs is to handle matters not suitable for other departments. Now, as simply as you can possibly put that, sir, what does that mean? Well, it, it means that uh, there are matters that, uh, well, problems that no one else. We uh, initiate a dialogue not fully executed in the proper order of requirements. Yes. See that guy? Who is he? He's the guy I saw in Sally's apartment. Mr. Greenspan. It's taken us three hours to discover that this year your department sponsored an Easter egg hunt, found three lost dogs. That's two. The other was a cat. 
You also, uh, yes, you also found some lost luggage. And you did the seating arrangements for a ballet and delivered a parcel. Is that all? Oh, but the other matters were trivial. Mr. Greenspan, I believe everything you've told me is a sham designed to conceal clandestine, illegal activities which jeopardize the liberties of our citizens. Now, sir, are you familiar with the term black bag job? I believe that the luggage... Now, stop that, sir. I remind you, you're under oath. And I ask you once more, what is the real function of your department? Senator, I have given you a comprehensive account of our assigned missions. You have given me a cover story, sir, and I'm not buying it. You're clearly setting an example for others in the unseen government in which, sir, I think you have an important role. Me? An important role? You're dismissed, sir. Your employees will be subpoenaed. I hope they are more cooperative. This committee stands in recess. Hello? Are you Mr. Really Spahn? I'm the head of my department. And what does that involve? Well, I certify the payrolls, uh, issue travel orders for DM. Did you assign missions? I give all the assignments in my department. Have you got a license to kill? I wish I did. You'd be in serious trouble. Come along, Melville. We have spies to master down in Miss Lane. My elevator's are around the corner. You're just jealous because I'm finally getting some of the credit that I deserve. Spies waiting to be mastered. <laughs> Maybe we should wait for an elevator, Melville. It's all this spy master stuff. Somebody thinks I'm an important spy and is getting back at ISI. No, it isn't that. Now get out of there. If they don't think I'm a spy master, then what is it? What is this all about? Adderley! Adderley! Investigating miscellaneous affairs, as you know, and what well, makes this enemy territory, forgive me? Oh, yeah, no, I understand. Now, Mona, may I call you Mona? Yeah, whatever. You're the only secretary in this department. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a small unit, yeah. I see. Then you do the filing. I only ask this because, well, you seem like such an organized person, but the files are, well, how shall I put it, a bit disorganized? Well, you could say in a word, they're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that, Mona? Well, Mr. Greenspan... Um, it's Mr. Greenspan's filing system, sir. I mean, he will take files out that I've already put in and put them where he thinks they should go, or if there's an inactive file, he might... <laughs> Sorry, he is my boss, and uh, he just sometimes likes... Well, most of the time, he likes to do things the way he wants to do them. Thank you very much, Mona. That's exactly what I wanted to know. And Mona, when you come before my committee, don't be frightened. I mean, you can see I'm not really an ogre. Thank you. Bye-bye. Is that all? Oh, but the other matters were trivial. Mr. Greenspan, I believe everything you've told me is a sham, designed to conceal clandestine, illegal activities which jeopardize the liberties of our citizens. I wouldn't have believed it possible. Well, that senator's making headlines out of miscellaneous affairs. It'll run its course, Major. People will lose interest in miscellaneous affairs as quickly as I did. It can't be allowed to run its course. I won't have ISI ridiculed. How do you propose? Not me, Adderley. You. You're going to stop him. Me? When you're subpoenaed, you'll testify, and you'll reveal the real function of miscellaneous affairs. But miscellaneous affairs has no real function. Then think of one, Adderley, and think fast. And see if you can keep Melville out of the public eye. Do they really think Mr. Greenspan is a spy master, Vienna? Yeah, I think so, Mona. That's why he's gonna stay here, where you can keep an eye on him. I can take care of myself. This is a secure area, Melville. Ah, uh, just a second. The senator got in here. You mean when his men came to pick up the files? No, Adderley, no. This guy came down here. This guy was a forerunner, right? He was a tall guy with a beard, came down to see if the area was secure, then followed the senator who wanted to know 
Why are files were so disorganized? My files are in perfect order. I can find anything. Well, almost anything. That's what I told him, Mr. Greenspan. When, Mona? When did he come? Uh, about an hour ago, and then just before you came in, these arrived, one for you and one for me. Summonses for the committee. Yep, and they want to see you this afternoon. Okay, you stay here and keep an eye on the spy master. Don't let him wander off. I'm gonna go see if I can light a fire under the senator. Mr. Adderley, uh, you were once a top flight agent in the foreign division. A spy? We prefer the term operative. Well, operative, then. How did you happen to wind up in miscellaneous affairs? I guess they're the only outfit that uh, needed a hand. Um, is it true that miscellaneous affairs uh, performs only insignificant and trivial errands? No, sir. Uh, could you explain to us uh, an important son? Well, right now I'm investigating the suicide of an ISI employee, Sally Aiken. Sally Aiken? Why did her suicide uh, concern miscellaneous affairs? Well, her death didn't relate to an active department of ISI, therefore the investigation fell to us. Investigation? Her file says that she jumped off an overpass. I'm not so sure. You think she was murdered? Well, the thought has crossed my mind, but I intend to find out exactly what did happen. Well, if you succeed, let me know. Believe me, Senator, you'll be the first to know. You got the filing cabinet. Nice touch, Mona. Nice touch. Yeah, I know, but Mr. Greenspan is kind of useless because there's nothing to file. There are no memos, there are no letters. We don't even have the cafeteria menu. Just in case. The senator has put an embargo on us, Melville. All our mail goes directly to his office. But what does he want? What could he possibly find out from miscellaneous affairs? I'm not about miscellaneous affairs. In miscellaneous affairs. Well, I'm going home. At least I can find a chair there. What is the reason? You know? Uh, I'm not sure, Mona, but follow me through on this. Now, here's the senator and his aide, Ken. And here is Sally Aiken. And here's miscellaneous affairs. Now, we know that Sally worked for the senator, so there's a connection. And the senator has been after us ever since Sally Aiken died. Not quite. Sally died on Monday night. Our files were missing on Tuesday night. Nothing happened Tuesday. No, Tuesday is when I found Ken in Sally's apartment. And a few hours after that, bang, there goes our files. And about half an hour after I told the senator about Sally Aiken's death, they slap an embargo on us. Right, so there is the connection. Suppose Sally had something on the senator. Letter, pictures. Oh, that's what Ken found in the apartment. No, he would have destroyed it. But he did find something that convinced him that Sally sent miscellaneous affairs. Something. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Sally's apartment. If we're right about Ken, then something in her apartment is missing. What, 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 wait, we're gonna look for something that isn't there? You got it. Neat. Empty ammonia bottle in the wastebasket in the kitchen. Can use it to clean up the spot. Now look, Mona. Cross your fingers. Unless somebody used the phone since Sally died, we'll be able to find out who her last call was to. Northridge Hotel. Sorry, wrong number. Dead end? Maybe. Maybe not. What? Something wrong? Yeah. The ribbon's missing. Adderley, 
This machine takes a carbon ribbon with the kind that you use once and then you just throw away, but you can... Hold it up to the light and see what was typed. I know, but Kenny Boy has it and he's probably destroyed it by now. Now, just a second, just a second. You may know your telephones, but I know typewriters. This machine has an erase capability with like a built-in memory, so you can... Watch this. Watch that. Hmm. So... The last thing Sally Aiken did was address something to us. Yeah, but if she says it to us, I didn't get it, you didn't get it. So who's left? The spy master. Call uh, Melville, even if he has to miss supper. Oh, Adam, I don't want to get him involved because... Mona, we need that. I'm going to go see Clack. Maybe it's time we subpoenaed the senator's files. Okay, well, well where am I going to reach you if, if I find out something? Call the office and keep Melville looking until he finds it. Whatever Sally sent us has got to be at his house. Relax, nobody is going to report you for taking the envelope home. It's not the envelope. This is my son's moose. If Christopher comes home from school and it's gone, Debbie's going to say, What? Miss Mr. Greenspan, we need that moose. Now, Adderley will be here any minute. Now, I don't know where he is. He said he'd be here. I'm here. Oh, boy. I have been trying to reach you. Where have you been? I couldn't make it. Somebody decided I should take my car for a swim. Adderley, if anything has happened to that car... Melville, everything conceivable has happened to that car. Right now, it's seeing how long it can hold its breath. Is that what Sally said? Yeah, it's the cassette. We didn't play it till you got here. We didn't. We waited for you. Play it. What? This is the only tape recorder that we have. That's why I took the cassette home. 
And then all this spy master stuff started. And I just forgot about it. You have to put it in uh, underneath the tail. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Spanky, the storytelling moose. Here's our story for today. It does that automatically. Yes? Ken Ward, Mr. Irving. We got it, Keith. Jerome, the mine owner, bribed the mining inspector. Jerome knew that accident was just waiting to happen. Keith, are you there? Yes. You know, that's what I've been looking for. Ken, lose those records. Lose? Lose everything. We can hang this whole thing on Bailey. Your opponent. That's right. It'll be enough to win us the election. I'm afraid Mr. Bailey's tampering with the mining inspections is going to get him into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Maybe this will teach him to take his opponents more seriously. My sentiments, exactly. And that is our story for today, boys and girls. Is that what this is all about? Yeah, I hope your friends in the media won't be too disappointed, Melville. Adderley, where would Sally have got hold of that tape? Politicians often tape their calls. Helps the police keep track of cranks. Okay, but why would she wait until now? Well, she had a nervous breakdown after Bailey killed himself, and then the senator gave her a job and probably some money. Yeah, but why now? Conscience. She couldn't let him be the chairman of a powerful investigation committee after what he'd done. Come on. We gotta go see Clack. And that is our story for today, boys and girls. Now you can stop the committee. It'll take a week to see if this tape's authentic. Even then, it still doesn't prove he killed Sally Aiken. It proves he had a motive. You'll have to prove he acted on it. And Sally died while he was talking to a room full of people, including me. Did you talk to him on the telephone? No. Nope. His aide placed the call and did all the talking. And I bet you he made a point of telling you the exact time. Come on, Mona. We got work to do. No, I can't, V.H. It's a subpoena. I have to appear in front of the committee in two hours. Well, stall him as long as you can. Come on, Melville. Maybe you can be spy master after all. Now, where are we going? Northridge. What? And we got to get back before Mona finishes testifying. That's over an hour away. Not if I drive. Adderley, I don't want this car abused. Right. Debbie won't let me go over 55 miles per hour. <laughs> First witness, Miss Mona Ellerby. Adderley, wait a minute. I don't want to stand your fault in the place, Mel. We'll let go. Try to care. When was the last time I had an accident? Last night. Then I've had a perfect record. Put your left hand on the book. Raise your right hand. Just where to tell the truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth? Well, I do, I do. State your name, address, and occupation, please. <coughs> my name is Mona Ellerby. Actually, that's Mona Lorraine Ellerby. Now, that sort of brings up an interesting story, because, well, like, my parents, when they were on their honeymoon, right, they wanted to go to Paris, and they wanted to go to the Louvre, right? They wanted to go to the Louvre and see the Mona Lisa. So, so they went, it was their honeymoon, they went over and they saw the Mona Lisa. Then they went afterwards, they went to this um, sidewalk bistro where they had white wine and quiche Lorraine. <laughs> so then, like a little while later, 
There I was, Mona Lorraine. <laughs> Address and occupation, please. Okay. My address is 117 North Crescent. That's off Axton Circle. Now, if you want to get to it, you, you have to go like two blocks past. Well, you could go down Third Street because it's a one way street if you come up Axton, but then if. Well, you could go across the bridge. Miss Ellerby, we won't be dropping by for tea. Oh, no. No, you couldn't. Because I, I mean, uh, everybody, no, I've only got a one bedroom. <laughs> Silly. Are you employed by miscellaneous affairs, Miss Ellerby? Well, I'm, I'm employed. No, well, not. A, no. No? Well, actually, see, what happens is I'm employed by the International Security Intelligence, and then they assign me. To miscellaneous affairs. Let's not split hair, shall we? Now, what are your duties at miscellaneous affairs? Oh, my duties. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, so I get there and I get Mr. Greenspan his coffee first thing in the morning. Now, he likes it double double. I mean, so like I put three lumps of sugar and I put extra. <coughs> Excuse me, extra cream. <coughs> but usually we don't have any lumps, so I have. May I? Do... I just thought I'd. You're stalling, Miss Ellerby. All I'm trying to do is to just tell you everything. I mean, Miss Ellerby, I just want to know what you do after you get Mr. Greenspan's coffee. Oh. but when we used to get the mail, I used to open it. I'd open it, right, in paper cuts, you know? But, because, we see, we used to have a letter opener, but then it got, I don't know, Mr. Green's, well, it got lost. Well, what happens to the mail after you open it? Mr. Chairman. You're out of order, Mr. Adderley. This whole hearing is out of order. If you're not quiet, Mr. Adderley. I'll have you removed. The only one who's leaving this room is you, Senator. You're not a witness, Major Clack. Which means you're not immune to a slander suit. You mean we can't say things like, you killed Sally Aiken? Sally Aiken killed herself while I was on the phone. Too many unimpeachable witnesses, including you, Major Clack. Your aide called you in Northbridge. Exactly. So how could I be in two places at the same time? Easy. I'd like to speak to Mr. Adderley, please. Miscellaneous Affairs, Adderley speaking. Hi, VH, it's me. How you doing, buddy? Did you get the story on Senator Irving for me? He was registered at the Northridge Hotel the night Sally Aiken died, all right. And did he stay all night? He checked in at 8 and he stepped out around 8.30. Sally called at midnight, but he wasn't there. Show him the message slip, VH. His assistant came by the next morning to get his things. Well, if he didn't stay all night, how did he phone his supporters? The same way you're talking to me, bud. I'm on tape. You ask the right questions, I give the recorded answers. Well, this, is, this is utterly preposterous. Should I play the other tape, VH? You took the words right out of my mouth. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Spanky, the storytelling moose. Here's our story for today. Ken, we got it, Keith. Jerome, the mine owner, bribed the mining inspector. Then accident was just... Yes. Yes. One right, statement, Senator. Whose voice is that? Please report these allegations. One statement. Get out of here. Morning, Mona. Morning, VH. 
Well, you notice anything different? You're wearing a different color eyeshadow. It's very becoming. Everything come back in one piece? Ooh. Almost. Oh, Jesse. Hit the fence chasing a line drive, did he? Ernie and the guys in maintenance thought maybe they could fix it. Tell him to forget it, Mona. I don't think the world is ready for this yet. Mona! Get me Major Clack. Yes, Mr. Greenspan. Uh, what for? Some idiot has covered the A to E elevator. Clack's idea. With the department heads only sign. I just wanted to say it was a great idea. <laughs> Lacoste Inspiration, the new fragrance for women. Thick, heavy makeup? Not for these cover girls. New True Blend Whip Foundation feels light as silk. It covers so naturally, what you see and feel is you. It's true. New True Blend Whip Foundation. When you get a cold, you can't always slow down. But you can feel better fast with NyQuil at night and DayQuil during the day. They can give you the cold symptom relief you need so you can keep going. So leave the coughing, aching, and fever behind with NyQuil at night and DayQuil during the day. Feel better fast. The cooler the shine, the hotter the look. That's why I love new Ice Shine from Pantene. It's new. The pro vitamin formula with Shine Boosters gives you twice the shine. It takes all the dull stuff and polishes it. And you are at Shine Potential, like Shine Peak. This is the shine right here. It's under here where you think it's hiding. It's just all over. New Pantene Ice Shine. Brilliant. Soon it will be time for the crew of SG-1 to embark on their final journey through the gate. My God. But before they do, they must travel further than they have ever gone before. Atlantis. I think it's worth checking out. Fight harder than they've ever fought before. We win or we die. And defeat an enemy more powerful than they've ever faced. The time to join this fight is now. Stargate SG-1, the final season, begins November 2nd. We need a new plan. Damn good one. On Space. <laughs>